The Dutch Empire Dutch, het Nederlandse Koloniale RIJK comprised the overseas colonies, enclaves, and outposts controlled and administered by Dutch chartered companies, mainly the Dutch West India and the Dutch East India Company, and subsequently by the Dutch Republic 1581 and the modern Kingdom of the Netherlands since 1815. It was initially a trade-based entity which derived most of its influence from merchant enterprise and Dutch control of international maritime shipping routes through strategically placed outposts, rather than expansive territorial ventures. With a few notable exceptions, the majority of the Dutch Empire's overseas holdings consisted of coastal forts, factories, and port settlements with varying degrees of incorporation of their hinterlands and surrounding regions. Dutch chartered companies often dictated that their possessions be kept as confined as possible to avoid unnecessary expense, and while some such as the Dutch Cape Colony modern South Africa and Dutch East Indies today's Indonesia expanded anyway due to the pressure of independently minded Dutch colonists, others remained undeveloped, isolated trading centres dependent on an indigenous host nation. This was reflective of the fact that the primary network of the Dutch Empire was commercial exchange as opposed to sovereignty over a homogeneous landmass. The imperial ambitions of the Dutch were bolstered by the strength of their existing shipping industry, as well as the key role they played in the expansion of maritime trade between Europe and the Orient. Because small European trading companies often lacked the capital or the manpower for large scale operations, the States General chartered the Dutch West India Company and the Dutch East India Company in the early 17th century. These were considered the largest and most extensive maritime trading companies at the time, and once held a virtual monopoly on strategic European shipping routes westward through the Southern Hemisphere around South America through the Strait of Magellan, and eastward around Africa, past the Cape of Good Hope. The company's domination of global commerce contributed greatly to a commercial revolution and a cultural flowering in the Netherlands known as the Dutch Golden Age. In their search for new trade passages between Asia and Europe, Dutch navigators explored and charted vast regions such as New Zealand, Tasmania, and parts of the eastern coast of North America. In the 18th century, the Dutch Empire began to decline as a result of the Fourth Anglo Dutch War, in which it lost a number of its colonial possessions and trade monopolies to the British Empire. Nevertheless, the main portions of the empire survived until the advent of global decolonization following World War II (1939–1945), namely the East Indies (Indonesia) and Dutch Guiana (Suriname). Three former colonial territories in the West Indies islands around the Caribbean Sea, Aruba, Curaçao, and Sint Maarten, are retained as constituent countries represented within the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Topic. Origins 1543 to 1602. The territories that would later form the Dutch Republic began as a loose federation known as the Seventeen Provinces, which Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor and as Carlos I, King of Spain, inherited and brought under his direct rule in 1543. In 1566, a Protestant Dutch revolt broke out against rule by Roman Catholic Spain, sparking the Eighty Years' War. Led by William of Orange, independence was declared in the 1581 Act of Abjuration. The revolt resulted in the establishment of an de facto independent Protestant Republic in the North by Treaty of Antwerp, 1609, although Spain did not officially recognize Dutch independence until 1648. The coastal provinces of Holland and Zeeland had been important hubs of the European maritime trade network for centuries prior to Spanish rule. Their geographical location provided convenient access to the markets of France, Scotland, Germany, England and the Baltic. The war with Spain led many financiers and traders to emigrate from Antwerp, a major city in Flanders and then one of Europe's most important commercial centres, to Dutch cities, particularly Amsterdam, which became Europe's foremost centre for shipping, banking, and insurance. Efficient access to capital enabled the Dutch in the 1580s to extend their trade routes beyond northern Europe to new markets in the Mediterranean and the Levant. In the 1590s, Dutch ships began to trade with Brazil and the Dutch Gold Coast of Africa, towards the Indian Ocean, and the source of the lucrative spice trade. This brought the Dutch into direct competition with Portugal, which had dominated these trade routes for several decades, and had established colonial outposts on the coasts of Brazil, Africa and the Indian Ocean to facilitate them. 
The rivalry with Portugal, however, was not entirely economic. From 1580, after the death of the King of Portugal, Sebastian I, and much of the Portuguese nobility in the Battle of Alcacer Quibir, the Portuguese crown had been joined to that of Spain in an Iberian Union under the heir of Emperor Charles V, Philip II of Spain. By attacking Portuguese overseas possessions, the Dutch forced Spain to divert financial and military resources away from its attempt to quell Dutch independence. Thus began the several decade long Dutch Portuguese War. In 1594, the Company van Ver Company of Far Lands, was founded in Amsterdam, with the aim of sending two fleets to the Spice Islands of Maluku. The first fleet sailed in 1596 and returned in 1597 with a cargo of pepper, which more than covered the costs of the voyage. The second voyage, 1598 to 1599, returned its investors a 400% profit. The success of these voyages led to the founding of a number of companies competing for the trade. The competition was counterproductive to the company's interests as it threatened to drive up the price of spices at their source in Indonesia whilst driving them down in Europe. Topic: <laughs> Rise of Dutch economic hegemony 1602 to 1652. As a result of the problems caused by inter-company rivalry, the Dutch East India Company Dutch, Verenigde Oost Indische Company, VOC, was founded in 1602. The charter awarded to the company by the States General granted its sole rights, for an initial period of 21 years, to Dutch trade and navigation east of the Cape of Good Hope and west of the Straits of Magellan. The directors of the company, the Heeren 17, were given the legal authority to establish fortresses and strongholds to sign treaties, to enlist both an army and a navy, and to wage defensive war. The company itself was founded as a joint stock company, similarly to its English rival that had been founded two years earlier, the English East India Company. In 1621, the Dutch West India Company WIC was set up and given a 25-year monopoly to those parts of the world not controlled by its East India counterpart, the Atlantic, the Americas and the west coast of Africa. The Dutch also established a trading post in Ayutthaya, modern-day Thailand during the reign of King Naresuan, in 1604. <laughs> Philip E. Dutch conflicts The Spanish-Dutch War was for the Dutch part of their struggle for independence and religious freedom, during the Eighty Years' War. It was largely fought on the European continent, but war was also conducted against Philip II's overseas territories, including Spanish colonies and the Portuguese metropoles, colonies, trading posts and forts belonging at that time to the King of Spain and Portugal. The Netherlands became part of the domains of the Spanish branch of the Habsburg dynasty when Emperor Charles V divided the holdings of the Habsburg Empire following his abdication in 1555. In 1566, the Dutch revolt erupted and in 1568 the Dutch Republic embarked on the long, tortuous path of the Eighty Years' War also known as the Dutch War of Independence and began the invasion and looting of Spanish and, later, Portuguese colonies in the Americas and of Asia, including an attempted invasion of the Philippines then part of the Spanish East Indies. From 1517, the port of Lisbon in Portugal was the main European market for products from India that was attended by other nations to purchase their needs. But as a result of Portugal's incorporation in the Iberian Union with Spain by Philip II in 1580, all Portuguese territories were thereafter Spanish Habsburg branch territory, and thus all Portuguese markets were closed to the United Provinces. Thus, in 1595, the Dutch decided to set sail on their own to acquire products for themselves, making use of the secret knowledge of the Portuguese trade routes, which Cornelis de Houtman had managed to acquire in Lisbon. Pursuing their quest for alternative routes to Asia for trade, the Dutch were disrupting the Spanish Portuguese trade, and they eventually ranged as far afield as the Philippines. The Dutch sought to dominate the commercial sea trade in Southeast Asia, going so far in pursuit of this goal as to engage in what other nations and powers considered to be little more than piratical activities. The joining of the two crowns deprived Portugal of a separate foreign policy, with King Philip II's enemies becoming Portugal's enemies as well. War with the Dutch led to attacks on most of Portugal's far-flung trading network in and around Asia, including Ceylon modern Sri Lanka, and Goa, as well as attacks upon her commercial interests in Japan, Africa especially MENA, and South America. 
Even though the Portuguese had never been able to capture the entire island of Ceylon, they had been able to keep the coastal regions under their control for a considerable time before the coming of the Dutch in war. Portugal's South American colony, Brazil, was partially conquered by both France and the United Provinces. In the 17th century, the grand design of the West India Company involved attempting to corner the international trade in sugar by attacking Portuguese colonies in Brazil and Africa, seizing both the sugarcane plantations and the slave ports needed to resupply their labor. Although weakened by the Iberian Union with Spain, whose attention was focused elsewhere, the Portuguese were able to fight off the initial assault before the Battle of Matanzas Bay provided the WIC with the funds needed for a successful operation. Johann Mauritz was appointed governor of New Holland and landed at Recife in January 1637. In a series of successful expeditions, he gradually extended the Dutch possessions from Sergipe on the south to Maranhão in the north. The WIC also succeeded in conquering Gori, Elmina Castle, St. Thomas, and Luanda on the west coast of Africa. Both regions were also used as bases for Dutch privateers plundering Portuguese and Spanish trade routes. The dissolution of the Iberian Union in 1640 and Maurits's recall in 1643 led to increased resistance from the Portuguese colonists who still made up a majority of the Brazilian settlers. The Dutch were finally overcome during the 1650s but managed to receive 4 million reis 63 metric tons of gold in exchange for extinguishing their claims over Brazil in the 1661 Treaty of The Hague. Asia. War between Philip II's possessions and other countries led to a deterioration of Portugal's empire, as with the loss of Hormuz to England, but the Dutch Empire was the main beneficiary. The VOC began immediately to prize away the string of coastal fortresses that, at the time, comprised the Portuguese Empire. The settlements were isolated, difficult to reinforce if attacked, and prone to being picked off one by one, but nevertheless the Dutch only enjoyed mixed success in its attempts to do so. Amboina was captured from the Portuguese in 1605, but an attack on Malacca the following year narrowly failed in its objective to provide a more strategically located base in the East Indies with favourable monsoon winds. The Dutch found what they were looking for in Jakarta, conquered by Jan Cohen in 1619, later renamed Batavia after the putative Dutch ancestors the Batavians, and which would become the capital of the Dutch East Indies. Meanwhile, the Dutch continued to drive out the Portuguese from their bases in Asia. Malacca finally succumbed in 1641 after a second attempt to capture it, Colombo in 1656, Ceylon in 1658, Nagapatnam in 1662 and Kranganor and Cochin in 1662. Goa, the capital of the Portuguese Empire in the east, was unsuccessfully attacked by the Dutch in 1603 and 1610. Whilst the Dutch were unable in four attempts to capture Macau from where Portugal monopolized the lucrative China-Japan trade, the Japanese Sogonate's increasing suspicion of the intentions of the Catholic Portuguese led to their expulsion in 1639. Under the subsequent Sokoku policy, from 1639 till 1854 215 years, the Dutch were the only European power allowed to operate in Japan, confined in 1639 to Harado and then from 1641 at Tashima. In the mid-17th century the Dutch also explored the western Australian coasts, naming many places. The Dutch colonised Mauritius in 1638, several decades after three ships out of the Dutch Second Fleet sent to the Spice Islands were blown off course in a storm and landed in 1598. They named it in honour of Prince Maurice of Nassau, the stadtholder of the Netherlands. The Dutch found the climate hostile and abandoned the island after several further decades. The Dutch established a colony at Taiwan, present-day Anping, in the south of Taiwan, an island then largely dominated by Portuguese traders and known as Formosa, and in 1642 the Dutch took northern Formosa from the Spanish by force. In 1646, the Dutch tried to take the Spanish colony in the Philippines. The Dutch had a large force at their disposal but when they tried to take Manila, they were defeated at the battles of La Naval de Manila. After this defeat, the Dutch abandoned their efforts to take Manila and the Philippines. Between 1602 and 1796, the VOC sent almost a million Europeans to work in the Asia trade. The majority died of disease or made their way back to Europe, but some of them made the Indies their new home. Interaction between the Dutch and native population mainly took place in Sri Lanka and the modern Indonesian islands. 
Through the centuries there developed a relatively large Dutch-speaking population of mixed Dutch and Indonesian descent, known as Indas or Dutch Indonesians. Americas <inaudible> 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 In the Atlantic, the West India Company concentrated on wresting from Portugal its grip on the sugar and slave trade, and on opportunistic attacks on the Spanish treasure fleets on their homeward bound voyage. Bahia on the northeast coast of Brazil was captured in 1624 but only held for a year before it was recaptured by a joint Spanish Portuguese expedition. In 1628, Pete Hayne captured the entire Spanish treasure fleet, and made off with a vast fortune in precious metals and goods that enabled the company two years later to pay its shareholders a cash dividend of 70%, though the company was to have relatively few other successes against the Spanish. In 1630, the Dutch occupied the Portuguese sugar settlement of Pernambuco and over the next few years pushed inland, annexing the sugar plantations that surrounded it. In order to supply the plantations with the manpower they required, a successful expedition was launched in 1637 from Brazil to capture the Portuguese slaving post of Elmina, and in 1641 successfully captured the Portuguese settlements in Angola. In 1642, the Dutch captured the Portuguese possession of Axum in Africa. By 1650, the West India Company was firmly in control of both the sugar and slave trades, and had occupied the Caribbean islands of St. Martin, Curaçao, Aruba and Bonaire in order to guarantee access to the island's salt pans. Unlike in Asia, Dutch successes against the Portuguese in Brazil and Africa were short-lived. Years of settlement had left large Portuguese communities under the rule of the Dutch, who were by nature traders rather than colonizers. In 1645, the Portuguese community at Pernambuco rebelled against their Dutch masters, and by 1654, the Dutch had been ousted from Brazil. In the intervening years, a Portuguese expedition had been sent from Brazil to recapture Luanda in Angola. By 1648, the Dutch were expelled from there also. On the northeast coast of North America, the West India Company took over a settlement that had been established by the Company of New Netherland 1614 at Fort Orange at Albany on the Hudson River, relocated from Fort Nassau which had been founded in 1614. The Dutch had been sending ships annually to the Hudson River to trade fur since Henry Hudson's voyage of 1609. To protect its precarious position at Albany from the nearby English and French, the company founded the fortified town of New Amsterdam in 1625, at the mouth of the Hudson, encouraging settlement of the surrounding areas of Long Island and New Jersey. The fur trade ultimately proved impossible for the company to monopolize due to the massive illegal private trade in furs, and the settlement of New Netherland was unprofitable. In 1655, the nearby colony of New Sweden on the Delaware River was forcibly absorbed into New Netherland after ships and soldiers were sent to capture it by the Dutch governor, Peter Stuyvesant. Since its inception, the Dutch East India Company had been in competition with its counterpart, the English East India Company, founded two years earlier but with a capital base eight times smaller, for the same goods and markets in the East. In 1619, the rivalry resulted in the Amboina Massacre, when several English company men were executed by agents of the Dutch. The event remained a source of English resentment for several decades, and indeed was used as a cause célèbre as late as the Second Anglo-Dutch War in the 1660s. Nevertheless, in the late 1620s, the English Company shifted its focus from Indonesia to India. In 1643, the Dutch West India Company established a settlement in the ruins of the Spanish settlement of Valdivia in southern Chile. The purpose of the expedition was to gain a foothold on the west coast of the Americas, an area that was almost entirely under the control of Spain the Pacific Ocean, at least most of it to the east of the Philippines, being at the time almost a Spanish lake, and to extract gold from nearby mines. In cooperative indigenous peoples, who had forced the Spanish to leave Valdivia in 1604 contributed to get the expedition to leave after some months of occupation. This occupation triggered the return of the Spanish to Valdivia and the building of one of the largest defensive complexes of colonial America. Topic: <inaudible> Southern Africa. By the middle of the 17th century, the Dutch East India Company had overtaken Portugal as the dominant player in the spice and silk trade, and in 1652 founded a colony at the Cape of Good Hope on the southern African coast, as a victualling station for its ships on the route between Europe and Asia. 
Dutch immigration in the Cape rapidly swelled as prospective colonists were offered generous grants of land and tax-exempt status in exchange for producing the food needed to resupply passing ships. The Cape authorities also imported a number of Europeans of other nationalities, namely Germans and French Huguenots, as well as thousands of slaves from the East Indies, to bolster the local Dutch workforce. Nevertheless, there was a degree of cultural assimilation between the various ethnic groups due to intermarriage and the universal adoption of the Dutch language, and cleavages were likelier to occur along social and racial lines. The Dutch colony at the Cape of Good Hope expanded beyond the initial settlement and its borders were formally consolidated as the composite Dutch Cape Colony in 1778. At the time, the Dutch had subdued the indigenous Khoisan and San peoples in the Cape and seized their traditional territories. Dutch military expeditions further east were halted when they encountered the westward expansion of the Kosa people. Hoping to avoid being drawn into a protracted dispute, the Dutch government and the Kosa chieftains agreed to formally demarcate their respective areas of control and refrain from trespassing on each other's borders. However, the Dutch proved unable to control their own independently minded settlers, who disregarded the agreement and crossed into Kosa territory, sparking one of southern Africa's longest colonial conflicts, the Kosa Wars. <laughs> Rivalry with Great Britain and France 1652 In 1651, the English Parliament passed the first of the Navigation Acts which excluded Dutch shipping from the lucrative trade between England and its Caribbean colonies, and led directly to the outbreak of hostilities between the two countries the following year, the first of three Anglo-Dutch wars that would last on and off for two decades and slowly erode Dutch naval power to England's benefit. In 1661, amidst the Qing conquest of China, Ming General Kaozinga led a fleet to invade Formosa. The Dutch defence, led by Governor Frederick Coyot, held out for nine months. However, after Kauzinga defeated Dutch reinforcements from Java, Coyot surrendered Formosa. The Dutch Empire would never rule Formosa again. The Second Anglo-Dutch War was precipitated in 1664, when English forces moved to capture New Netherland. Under the Treaty of Breda 1667, New Netherland was ceded to England in exchange for the English settlements in Suriname, which had been conquered by Dutch forces earlier that year. Though the Dutch would again take New Netherland in 1673, during the Third Anglo-Dutch War, it was returned to England the following year, thereby ending the Dutch Empire in continental North America, but leaving behind a large Dutch community under English rule that persisted with its language, church and customs until the mid-18th century. In South America, the Dutch seized Cayenne from the French in 1658 and drove off a French attempt to retake it a year later. However, it was returned to France in 1664, since the colony proved to be unprofitable. It was recaptured by the Dutch in 1676, but was returned again a year later, this time permanently. The Glorious Revolution of 1688 saw the Dutch William of Orange ascend to the throne, and win the English, Scottish, and Irish crowns, ending 80 years of rivalry between the Netherlands and England, while the rivalry with France remained strong. During the American Revolutionary War, Britain declared war on the Netherlands, the Fourth Anglo-Dutch War, in which Britain seized the Dutch colony of Ceylon. Under the Peace of Paris 1783, Ceylon was returned to the Netherlands and Negapotnam ceded to Britain. Topic. Napoleonic era 1795 In 1795, the French Revolutionary Army invaded the Dutch Republic and turned the nation into a satellite of France, named the Batavian Republic. Britain, which was at war with France, soon moved to occupy Dutch colonies in Asia, South Africa and the Caribbean. Under the terms of the Treaty of Amiens signed by Britain and France in 1802, the Cape Colony and the islands of the Dutch West Indies that the British had seized were returned to the Republic. Ceylon was not returned to the Dutch and was made a British Crown Colony. After the outbreak of hostilities between Britain and France again in 1803, the British retook the Cape Colony. The British also invaded and captured the island of Java in 1811. In 1806, Napoleon dissolved the Batavian Republic and established a monarchy with his brother, Louis Bonaparte, on the throne as King of the Netherlands. Louis was removed from power by Napoleon in 1810, and the country was ruled directly from France until its liberation in 1813. The following year, the independent Netherlands signed the Anglo Dutch Treaty of 1814 with Britain. 
All the colonies Britain had seized were returned to the Netherlands, with the exception of the Cape Colony, Guyana and Sri Lanka. Post-Napoleonic era After Napoleon's defeat in 1815, Europe's borders were redrawn at the Congress of Vienna. For the first time since the Declaration of Independence from Spain in 1581, the Dutch were reunited with the Southern Netherlands in a constitutional monarchy, the United Kingdom of the Netherlands. The Union lasted just 15 years. In 1830, a revolution in the southern half of the country led to the de facto independence of the new state of Belgium. The bankrupt Dutch East India Company was liquidated on 1 January 1800, and its territorial possessions were nationalised as the Dutch East Indies. Anglo-Dutch rivalry in Southeast Asia continued to fester over the port of Singapore, which had been ceded to the British East India Company in 1819 by the Sultan of Johor. The Dutch claimed that a treaty signed with the Sultan's predecessor the year earlier had granted them control of the region. However, the impossibility of removing the British from Singapore, which was becoming an increasingly important centre of trade, became apparent to the Dutch, and the disagreement was resolved with the Anglo-Dutch Treaty of 1824. Under its terms, the Netherlands ceded Malacca and their bases in India to the British, and recognised the British claim to Singapore. In return, the British handed over Ben Kulen and agreed not to sign treaties with rulers in the islands south of the Straits of Singapore. Thus the archipelago was divided into two spheres of influence, a British one, on the Malay Peninsula, and a Dutch one in the East Indies. For most of the Dutch East Indies history, and that of the VOC before it, Dutch control over their territories was often tenuous, but was expanded over the course of the 19th century. Only in the early 20th century did Dutch dominance extend to what was to become the boundaries of modern-day Indonesia. Although highly populated and agriculturally productive, Java was under Dutch domination for most of the 350 years of the combined VOC and Dutch East Indies era. Many areas remained independent for much of this time including Aceh, Lombok, Bali and Borneo. In 1871, all of the Dutch possessions on the Dutch Gold Coast were sold to Britain. The Dutch West India Company was abolished in 1791, and its colonies in Suriname and the Caribbean brought under the direct rule of the state. The economies of the Dutch colonies in the Caribbean had been based on the smuggling of goods and slaves into Spanish America, but with the end of the slave trade in 1814 and the independence of the new nations of South and Central America from Spain, profitability rapidly declined. Dutch traders moved en masse from the islands to the United States or Latin America, leaving behind small populations with little income and which required subsidies from the Dutch government. The Antilles were combined under one administration with Suriname from 1828 to 1845. Slavery was not abolished in the Dutch Caribbean colonies until 1863, long after those of Britain and France, though by this time only 6,500 slaves remained. In Suriname, slaveholders demanded compensation from the Dutch government for freeing slaves, whilst in St. Martin, abolition of slavery in the French half in 1848 led slaves in the Dutch half to take their own freedom. In Suriname, after the abolition of slavery, Chinese workers were encouraged to immigrate as indentured labourers, as were Javanese, between 1890 and 1939. Decolonization Indonesia In January 1942, Japan invaded the Netherlands' East Indies. The Dutch surrendered two months later in Java, with Indonesians initially welcoming the Japanese as liberators. The subsequent Japanese occupation of Indonesia during the remainder of World War II saw the fundamental dismantling of the Dutch colonial state's economic, political and social structures, replacing it with a Japanese regime. In the decades before the war, the Dutch had been overwhelmingly successful in suppressing the small nationalist movement in Indonesia such that the Japanese occupation proved fundamental for Indonesian independence. However, the Indonesian Communist Party founded by Dutch socialist Henk Snevliet in 1914, popular also with Dutch workers and sailors at the time, was in strategic alliance with Sarikat Islam Q. V., as early as 1917 until the proclamation of Indonesian independence and was particularly important in the fight against Japanese occupation of the Dutch East Indies in the Second World War. 
The Japanese encouraged and backed Indonesian nationalism in which new indigenous institutions were created and nationalist leaders such as Sukarno were promoted. The internment of all Dutch citizens meant that Indonesians filled many leadership and administrative positions, although the top positions were still held by the Japanese. Two days after the Japanese surrender in August 1945, Sukarno and fellow nationalist leader Hatta unilaterally declared Indonesian independence. A four and a half year struggle followed as the Dutch tried to re establish their colony. Dutch forces eventually re occupied most of the colonial territory and a guerrilla struggle ensued. The majority of Indonesians, and, ultimately, international opinion, favoured independence, and in December 1949, the Netherlands formally recognised Indonesian sovereignty. Under the terms of the 1949 agreement, Western New Guinea remained under the auspices of Netherlands New Guinea. The new Indonesian government under President Sukarno pressured for the territory to come under Indonesian control as Indonesian nationalists initially intended. Following United States pressure, the Netherlands transferred it to Indonesia under the 1962 New York Agreement. Topic: <inaudible> Suriname and the Netherlands Antilles. In 1954, under the Charter for the Kingdom of the Netherlands, the Netherlands, Suriname and the Netherlands Antilles at the time including Aruba became a composite kingdom. The former colonies were granted autonomy, save for certain matters including defence, foreign affairs and citizenship, which were the responsibility of the realm. In 1969, unrest in Curaçao led to Dutch marines being sent to quell rioting. In 1973, negotiations started in Suriname for independence, and full independence was granted in 1975, with 60,000 emigrants taking the opportunity of moving to the Netherlands. In 1986, Aruba was allowed to secede from the Netherlands Antilles Federation, and was pressured by the Netherlands to move to independence within ten years. However, in 1994, it was agreed that its status as a realm in its own right could continue. On October 10, 2010, the Netherlands Antilles were dissolved. Effective on that date, Curaçao and Sint Maarten acceded to the same country status within the kingdom that Aruba already enjoyed. The islands of Bonaire, Sint Eustatius and Saba were granted a status similar to Dutch municipalities, and are now sometimes referred to as the Caribbean Netherlands. <inaudible> <inaudible> Legacy Generally, the Dutch do not celebrate their imperial past, and anti-colonial sentiments have prevailed since the 1960s. Subsequently, colonial history is not featured prominently in Dutch schoolbooks. This perspective on their imperial past only recently shifted with Prime Minister Jan Peter Balkanende's contentious call for the return of the VOC mentality. <inaudible> <inaudible> Dutch diaspora In some Dutch colonies there are major ethnic groups of Dutch ancestry descending from emigrated Dutch settlers. In South Africa the Boers and Cape Dutch collectively known as the Afrikaners. The Berger people of Sri Lanka and the Indo people of Indonesia as well as the Creoles of Suriname are mixed race people of Dutch descent. In the USA there have been three American presidents of Dutch descent, Martin Van Buren, the first president who was not of British descent, and whose first language was Dutch, the 26th president Theodore Roosevelt, and Franklin D. Roosevelt, the 32nd president, elected to four terms in office 1933 to 1945 and the only U.S. president to have served more than two terms. Topic. Dutch language Topic. Dutch in Southeast Asia Despite the Dutch presence in Indonesia for almost 350 years, the Dutch language has no official status and the small minority that can speak the language fluently are either educated members of the oldest generation, or employed in the legal profession, as some legal codes are still only available in Dutch. The Indonesian language inherited many words from Dutch, both in words for everyday life, and as well in scientific or technological terminology. One scholar argues that 20% of Indonesian words can be traced back to Dutch words. <laughs> <laughs> Dutch in South Asia The century and half of Dutch rule in Ceylon and southern India left few to no traces of the Dutch language. Dutch in the Caribbean 
Today, in Suriname, Dutch is the official language and 58% of the population speak it as their mother tongue. 24% of the population speaks Dutch as a second language, and in total 82% of the population can speak Dutch. In Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao, Dutch is the official language but spoken as a first language by only 7-8% of the population, although most people on the islands can speak the language and the education system on these islands is in Dutch at some or all levels. The population of the three northern Antilles, St. Martin, Saba, and St. Eustatius, is predominantly English-speaking. <laughs> Dutch in America In New Jersey in the United States, an extinct dialect of Dutch, Jersey Dutch, spoken by descendants of 17th-century Dutch settlers in Bergen and Passaic counties, was noted to still be spoken as late as 1921. Topic. Dutch in Africa The greatest linguistic legacy of the Netherlands was in its colony in South Africa, which attracted large numbers of Dutch farmer in Dutch, Boer settlers, who spoke a simplified form of Dutch called Afrikaans, which is largely mutually intelligible with Dutch. After the colony passed into British hands, the settlers spread into the hinterland, taking their language with them. As of 2005, there were 10 million people for whom Afrikaans is either a primary and secondary language, compared with over 22 million speakers of Dutch. Other Creole languages with Dutch linguistic roots are Papiamento still spoken in Aruba, Bonaire, Curaçao, and Sint Eustatius, Saramakan and Sranan Tongo still spoken in Suriname, Berbice spoken but in danger of extinction in Guyana, Pecok spoken but in danger of extinction in Indonesia and the Netherlands, Albany Dutch spoken but in danger of extinction in the USA. Extinct Dutch-based Creole languages include, Skepi Guyana, Negerhollands aka Negro Dutch, Jersey Dutch and Mohawk Dutch USA, and Javando Java. Topic. Place names See also, List of place names of Dutch origin some towns of New York and areas of New York City, once part of the colony of New Netherland have names of Dutch origin, such as Brooklyn after Brukellen, Flushing after Vlissingen, The Bowery after Bowerage, Construction Site, Harlem after Harlem, Coney Island from Konin Island, modern Dutch spelling Konin Island, Rabbit Island and Staten Island meaning Island of the States. The last director general of the colony of New Netherland, Peter Stuyvesant, has bequeathed his name to a street, a neighborhood and a few schools in New York City, and the town of Stuyvesant. Many of the towns and cities along the Hudson in upstate New York have place names with Dutch origins for example Yonkers, Hoboken, Haverstraw, Newburgh, Stotsburg, Catskill, Kinderhook, Coemans, Rensselaer, Watervliet. Nassau County, one of the four that make up Long Island, is also of Dutch origin. The Schuylkill River that flows into the Delaware at Philadelphia is also a Dutch name meaning hidden or skulking river. Many towns and cities in Suriname share names with cities in the Netherlands, such as Alkmaar and Groningen. The capital of Curaçao is named Willemstad and the capitals of both St. Eustatius and Aruba are named Orgenstad. The first is named after the Dutch Prince Willem II van Orange Nassau, William of Orange Nassau and the two others after the first part of the current Dutch royal dynasty. Half of South Africa's major cities have Dutch names i.e. Johannesburg, Kaapstad, Vereeniging, Bloemfontein and Vanderbilpark. The country name New Zealand originated with Dutch cartographers, who called the islands Nova Zeelandia, after the Dutch province of Zeeland. British explorer James Cook subsequently anglicised the name to New Zealand. The Australian island state Tasmania is named after Dutch explorer Abel Tasman, who made the first reported European sighting of the island on 24 November 1642. He first named the island Anthony van Diemen's Land after his sponsor Anthony van Diemen, the governor of the Dutch East Indies. The name was later shortened to van Diemen's Land by the British. It was officially renamed in honour of its first European discoverer on 1 January 1856. Arnhem Land is named after the Dutch ship named Arnhem. The captain of the Arnhem Willem van also named the large island, east of Arnhem Groot Eiland, in modern Dutch spelling Groot Island, Large Island. There are many more Dutch geographical names in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Architecture 
In the Surinamese capital of Paramaribo, the Dutch Fort Zeelandia still stands today. The city itself also have retained most of its old street layout and architecture, which is part of the world's UNESCO heritage. In the centre of Malacca, Malaysia, the Stadthuis building and Christ Church still stand as a reminder of Dutch occupation. There are still archaeological remains of Fort Gaeta Hoop, modern Hartford, Connecticut, and Fort Orange, modern Albany, New York. Dutch architecture is easy to see in Aruba, Curaçao, Bonaire, and Saint Eustatius. The Dutch-style buildings are especially visible in Willemstad, with its steeply pitched gables, large windows, and soaring finials. Dutch architecture can also be found in Sri Lanka, especially in Gale, where the Dutch fortification and canal have been retained intact, even to an extent the former tropical villas of the VOC officials. Some of the most prominent example of these architecture is the former governor's mansion in Gale, currently known as Amangala Hotel and the old Dutch Reformed Church. In the capital Colombo, many of the Dutch and Portuguese architecture around the fort have been demolished during the British period, few of the remaining include Old Colombo Dutch Hospital and Wolvendal Church. During the period of Dutch colonisation in South Africa, a distinctive type of architecture, known as Cape Dutch architecture, was developed. These style of architecture can be found in historical towns such as Stellenbosch, Swellendam, Tulba and Graf Reinet. In the former Dutch capital of Cape Town, nearly nothing from the VOC era have survived except the Castle of Good Hope. Although the Dutch already started erecting buildings shortly after they arrived on the shores of Batavia, most Dutch built constructions still standing today in Indonesia stem from the 19th and 20th centuries. Forts from the colonial era, used for defence purposes, still line a number of major coastal cities across the archipelago. The largest number of surviving Dutch buildings can be found on Java and Sumatra, particularly in cities such as Jakarta, Bandung, Semarang, Yogyakarta, Surabaya, Siriban, Pasaruan, Bukatinggi, Sawalunto, Maidan, Padang and Malang. There are also significant examples of 17-19th century Dutch architecture around Banda Nera, Nusa Laut and Saparua, the former main spices islands, which due to limited economic development have retained many of its colonial elements. Another prominent example of Dutch colonial architecture is Fort Rotterdam in Makassar. The earlier Dutch construction mostly replicate the architecture style in the homeland such as Toko Mera. However these buildings were unsuitable to tropical climate and expensive to maintain. And as a result the Dutch officials begun to adapt to the tropical condition by applying native elements such as wide open veranda, ventilation and indigenous high pitch roofing into their villas. In the beginning of the Dutch presence, Dutch construction on Java was based on colonial architecture which was modified according to the tropical and local cultural conditions." Indonesian art and design professor Pamuji Suptander wrote. This was dubbed Arsitecture Indus Indies architecture, which combines the existing traditional Hindu-Javanese style with European forms. Many public buildings still standing and in use in Jakarta, such as the Presidential Palace, the Finance Ministry and the Performing Arts Theatre, were built in the 19th century in the classicist style. At the turn of the 20th century and partially due to the Dutch ethical policy, the number of Dutch people migrating to the colony grew with economic expansion. The increasing number of middle-class population led to the development of garden suburbs in major city across the Indies. Many of the houses were built in various style ranging from the Indies style, neo-Renaissance to modern art deco. Some examples of these residential district include Menteng in Jakarta, Darmo in Surabaya, Polonia in Maidan, Kotaburu in Yogyakarta, New Kandy in Semarang and as well as most of North Bandung. Indonesia also became an experimental ground for Dutch Art Deco architectural movement such as New Zakalikid, De Stigel, New Indisch and Amsterdam School. Several famous architects such as Wolf Shoemaker and Henri McLean Pont also made an attempt to modernize indigenous architecture, resulting several unique designs such as Posarang Church and Bandung Institute of Technology. The largest stock of these Art Deco building can be found in the city of Bandung, which, architecturally, can considered the most European city in Indonesia. Since Indonesia's independence, few governments have shown interest in the conservation of historical buildings. Many architecturally grand buildings have been torn down in the past decades to erect shopping centers or office buildings e.g. Hotel des Indies Batavia, Harmony Society, Batavia. Presently, however, more Indonesians have become aware of the value of preserving their old buildings. 
A decade ago, most people thought I was crazy when they learned of my efforts to save the old part of Jakarta. A few years later, the negative voices started to disappear, and now many people are starting to think with me, how are we going to save our city? In the past using the negative sentiment towards the colonial era was often used as an excuse to disregard protests against the demolition of historical buildings. An increasing number of people now see the old colonial buildings as part of their city's overall heritage rather than focusing on its colonial aspect. Leading Indonesian architect and conservationist Budi Lim said. Infrastructure Beyond Indonesia's Art Deco architecture also much of the country's rail and road infrastructure as well as its major cities were built during the colonial period. Many of Indonesia's main cities were mere rural townships before colonial industrialization and urban development. Examples on Java include the capital Jakarta and Bandung, outside Java examples include Ambon and Manado City. Most main railroads and rail stations on Java as well as the main road, called Daniel's Great Post Road Dutch, Groot Post Weg after the Governor-General commissioning the work, connecting west to east Java were also built during the Dutch East Indies era. Between 1800 and 1950 Dutch engineers created an infrastructure including 67,000 kilometers miles of roads, 7,500 kilometers 4, miles of railways, many large bridges, modern irrigation systems covering 1.4 million hectares 5,400 square miles of rice fields, several international harbors, and 140 public drinking water systems. These Dutch constructed public works became the material base of the colonial and post-colonial Indonesian state. Topic: <inaudible> Agriculture. Crops such like coffee, tea, cocoa, tobacco and rubber were all introduced by the Dutch. The Dutch were the first to start the spread of the coffee plant in Central and South America, and by the early 19th century Java was the third largest producer in the world. In 1778 the Dutch brought cacao from the Philippines to Indonesia and commenced mass production. Currently Indonesia is the world's second largest producer of natural rubber, a crop that was introduced by the Dutch in the early 20th century. Tobacco was introduced from the Americas and in 1863 the first plantation was established by the Dutch. Today Indonesia is not only the oldest industrial producer of tobacco, but also the second largest consumer of tobacco. Topic. Scientific discoveries Java Man was discovered by Eugene Dubois in Indonesia in 1891. The Komodo dragon was firstly described by Peter Owens in Indonesia in 1912 after an airplane crash in 1911 and rumors about living dinosaurs on Komodo Island in 1910. Topic. Territorial evolution See also Dutch colonization of the Americas Dutch East India Company Dutch West India Company Dutch Language Union List of Dutch East India Company trading posts Vervanchapslanden Ministry of the Colonies Netherlands References Topic. Bibliography Ammon, Ulrich 2005. Sociolinguistics. Baker, Colin Encyclopedia of Bilingualism and Bilingual Education. Multilingual Matters. Buij, G.E. The Phonology of Dutch. Boxer, C.R. The Dutch Seaborne Empire 1600–1800. Hutchinson. Boxer, C. R. The Portuguese Seaborne Empire 1415–1825. Hutchinson. Davies, K. G. The North Atlantic World in the Seventeenth Century. University of Minnesota. McKeevity, Colin The Penguin Historical Atlas of the North America. Viking. McKeevity, Colin the Penguin Historical Atlas of the Pacific.
Penguin. Osler, Nicholas. 2005. Empires of the Word: A Language History of the World. Harper Collins. Rigazinski, Jan. 2000. A Brief History of the Caribbean. Plume. Sardise, D. R. 1997. Southeast Asia: Past and Present. Westview. Scammell, G. V. 1989. The First Imperial Age: European Overseas Expansion. C. 1400 to 1715. Routledge. Sneddon, James. 2003. The Indonesian Language: Its History and Role in Modern Society. UNSW Press. Ship, Steve. 1997. Macau, China: A Political History of the Portuguese Colonies' Transition to Chinese Rule. McFarland. Taylor, Allen. 2001. American Colonies: The Settling of North America. Penguin. Vickers, Adrian. 2005. A History of Modern Indonesia. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-54262-6. Notes Further reading Andy Wegg, Rudy B., Galen A. Irwin Governance and Politics of the Netherlands 2nd ed. Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 1-4039-3529-7. Boxer, C. R. The Dutch in Brazil, 1624–1654. Oxford, Clarendon. OCLC 752668765. Bromley, J. S., E. H. Kosman Britain and the Netherlands in Europe and Asia, papers delivered to the Third Anglo-Dutch Historical Conference. Palgrave Macmillan UK. ISBN 978-1-349-00046-3. Korn, Charles first published 1998. The Sense of Eden, A History of the Spice Trade. Kodansha. ISBN 1-56836-249-8. Elphick, Richard, Herman Giliomi 1989. The Shaping of South African Society, 1652–1840 2nd ed. Cape Town, Maskew Miller Longman. ISBN 0-8195-6211-4. Gostra, Fem S. The Dutch East India Company, Expansion and Decline. Zutphen, Netherlands, Wahlberg. ISBN 978-90-5730-241-1. Postma, Johannes M. The Dutch in the Atlantic Slave Trade, 1600–1815. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-36585-6. Wesseling, H. L. Imperialism and Colonialism, Essays on the History of Colonialism. London, Greewood. ISBN 978-0-313-30431-6. Duolf, J. Spring 2011. The Many Meanings of Freedom, The Debate on the Legitimacy of Colonialism in the Dutch Resistance, 1940-1949. Journal of Colonialism and Colonial History, 12 1. Doi 10.1353, cch.2011.0002. Panneker, K. M. 1953. Asia and Western Dominance, 1498–1945, by K. M. Panneker. London, G. Allen and Onwin. Topic. External links In Dutch De Dutch and Portuguese Colonial History In Dutch VOC Kenniscentrum Dutch East Indies Documentary on YouTube The Atlas of Mutual Heritage Database, showing the Dutch Empire 1600-1800